why do you think sex is such a brilliant prism through which to explore kind of broader socio-political issues? One is it's like the highest taboo, right? It's like once you tell everyone your most intimate secret, everything else is on the table. And that actually really helped with our relationship because it's like we didn't know where we lived or we didn't know our dating history or we didn't know our mother's stories, yeah. but we knew what we liked in the bedroom. Yeah. And then we told each other that first before everything else. Yeah. And was like, okay, cool. Well, now we know that. I can tell you all of that really quickly. Yeah, Come yeah. to my house. Cause me and my mum, there's yeah. no shame after anything else because you know this. Yeah, yeah. And so it like opened the door to lots of other things. The other thing that we learned doing the podcast is this idea of like the British kind of mindset around sex uh, and how much it informed the Indian mindset around sex. So how much empire had an effect on the way that Indians then... Uh, became a little bit more repressed. Um, and so the Kama Sutra is like very much a lifestyle guide. And I just love that. It's like a lifestyle guide because sex is part of like every day. It's part of every moment. And I thought that was cool. When we did the podcast, it, well, it was just about like gratuitous, salacious details about our sex lives and dating. But um, we're, we're now, we've been commissioned for series four. We're about to record. Woo! Thank you. And actually through the entire series, uh, if you listen to the podcast, yes, it is about sex and, 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 and the smell of it and every, everything that comes with it. But actually, it's, it's, it's about our mothers. It's about being race traitors. It's about being brown women and dating non-Asian guys. It's about... And I remember this... Usually, our USP is like, we've got to be funny. Are you laughing? Are you laughing? Are you laughing? Why are you fucking laughing? And it, that's our thing. But like, we had this one moment, this very poignant moment, um, when we were recording in the studio in BBC where I was with my, part, ex part, my partner at the time. And we looked at each other and we were like... We're never gonna have our, our white partners are never gonna call our mum's mother. So in our culture, if we got if I got married to a man, he would call my mum mum. And you marry the family and and, and then ma, ma, and then there's there's just there's so much that we were grieving mm. about losing that sense of identity and culture. So there are there are yes, we're silly and we're funny, but you know we talk about brown boys and we talk you know people talk about toxic white men or we talk about toxic brown men you know they're never our allies they didn't help us we talk about our relationship with our bodies you know we are old we didn't have Maya Jama growing up so we were brown women growing up with Kate Moss <laughs> you know it is I'm, yeah, I'm still dealing allies. with the body dysmorphia of that like that's not a, that's not a joke so like there's just there's so much that we unpack and in our show I suppose we go ham sex it kind of allows us to explain and explore kind of what it means to be human, how we relate to other people, how we relate to ourselves it's and to so our own disarming, bodies. It's disarming, right? It's so disarming for someone to come to you and be like, I like this yeah. and this is who I am. And so the, the rest of you is like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I think I like this. Then it, it like helps everyone just feel like we're on a level. Totally. 